Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Final Cut Help, brought to you by CreativeCow.net. Today, we're going to take a look at a problem that happens when you shoot video in the bright outdoors, and that is backlighting. What really happens here is that you have to make a decision. Do I want to compensate for the sky or the subject matter? Properly expose the sky, subject's going to look really dark. Properly expose the subject matter, sky's going to get blown out. So what's a good videographer or editor to do? Well, really, it's all about compromise and meeting in the middle. So when you look at the shot, it's going to sort of seem blah, because the sky is so-so and the footage is so-so of the subject. But we could fix this using the three-way color corrector. Let's see how. I've got a shot loaded here, and it's just what we were talking about. The people are OK, the sky's OK, but really, neither pop. That's OK. We could fix this. Let's make things a little bit bigger, and we'll click here in between the shots and drag to make our canvas bigger. And we'll go ahead and make the browser a little bit smaller. What we're trying to do is just get a bigger shot so we can see what's happening. That looks pretty good. There we go. Good. Now let's go to work. I've got the shot selected, and if you want to get some hands-on practice, you can actually download this file from the Creative Cow website. Here we go. Effects, Color Corrector, Three-Way. Now we have this, and let's do our first basic pass. We'll take our white balance and eyedropper on something that should be white, and that just did a little gentle color correction. That's fine, and you see as we open it up, it looks okay, but notice how the sky quickly blows out. So we're not going to do that. Instead of doing this globally, we'll go ahead and isolate. So click on the limit effect triangle and open that up, and then grab the eyedropper for limiting the effect. What we're going to first do is go after the people. So we'll select a color here in the faces, and then click the key icon once. What that does is shows you the selection mat, what part of the image is going to be affected by the color corrector. Now, we can limit that based on color, saturation, or luma values, and usually we don't want to use all of them, so let's try unchecking saturation. That's okay, but maybe we want to keep that. For luma, let's open that up so a wider range is affected. There we go. That's starting to get all the skin tones. Pull that apart and it gets a little bit gentler. And let's affect more saturation. Well, maybe not the trees, that's too saturated, but we'll go down a little bit here and pick up more. Lastly, we could spread apart these top hue colors to affect a wider range of skin tones. And you see that's going pretty well there. We've got the skin tones selected. Now the mat itself is really jagged, very pixelated, and that's not going to do a good job. You'll get really visible blockiness in the color correction. But you could fix this. Simply drag the softening slider until you get a nice gentle mat. Now that that's good, we'll go ahead and click the key icon twice. Here's the original clip, here's our new clip. We can go ahead and open that up a bit now and just drag that middle slider. And notice how the skin tones are only being affected. Now that's way too far, but we could go about here and put a lot more saturation in to really help those skin tones. That's looking a lot better. A quick toggle of the little eyeball here will show you the before and after, and notice how the skin tones are just popping now, adding significantly to our non-existent lighting budget. Now that we got that, let's reverse this color corrector and go after the rest of the problems in the shot. I'll go ahead and over to the filters list and select the color corrector and just do copy, paste, so there's a second copy. Now it looks way too strong because it's doubled up the effect. Go back to visual, and click the key icon so you see just the mat. Right below the key icon is this ability to invert the selection. And what we just did there is selected everything but the skin tones. Now we could play with this a bit and play with what's selected and you know get in there a little bit and you know have a little less trees. We're doing pretty good there. There we go. And what we're trying to do is get everything but the skin tones. That looks pretty good. Click the key icon twice. And now we can go after just the tree area on its own 
and notice how the trees in the sky are being affected. So I'll open up the middle and drop the white just a little bit, which is making the blue more intense. A little bit more saturation on just the sky. And that looks pretty good. Let's call up the frame viewer and that's going to show us our current edit. There's the current frame and the current frame without filters. And you see our nice before and after. So the three-way color corrector is fantastic when you combine it with that limit effect. And if you need to, just stack that color corrector up and use more than one. Sometimes you're going to go after the skin tones and the sky separately, especially in a situation where you have backlighting. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Final Cut Help, brought to you by creativecow.net. Be sure to head on over there where you can download this video file and get your own hands-on practice, as well as check out the wonderful Final Cut Pro support forums. Thanks again.